to be here in Slush, um, and we have, the topic is diversity as an engine of growth, and we have actually a very exciting diverse panel here. So we had some introductions, but I think it would be really nice if we have the, the panelists actually introduce themselves. So please, Aurora. Thank you, yes. My name's Aurora Belferk, and Swedish by nationality, born in London, lived in Saudi Arabia. Um, worked a lot within waste management and scrap dealing, so not your traditional startup beginning of my career. And then in the moved into mobile, uh, founded, co-founded a business called RAP, and spent the last two years in the Middle East uh, doing angel investments and did a informal stand-up comedy show about the bullshit of startups across the region, which was a lot of fun. And now joined EQT Ventures, so we're doing growth investments in Europe. And I run our in-house startup called Together. Cool. Ooh, that's a, <laughs> a lot condensing into 30 seconds, but yeah. Thank you. Hey everybody, okay. Uh, my name is Paul Bragill. Um, I'm a former three-time entrepreneur turned investor. Uh, I've now started six different funds on four different continents, have done 224 investments to date, all pretty early stage size, and um, yeah, I also, I hold three citizenships, some Polish, American, and also Colombian. Great. Hey everyone, I'm Jenny Wolf, I'm the CEO and founder of Brand Bastion. At Brand Bastion, we protect companies from threats on social media, such as uh, piracy, malware, scam, racism, hate speech, and we would develop technology that is able to, in real time, remove harmful comments as well as uh, responding to comments and escalating comments um, to our clients. And we work with uh, governments and as well a few Fortune 500 uh, brands. And uh, we have team members, I think, uh, well, we cover 43 languages, so we have team members all over the globe. So diversity is a very important topic for myself and our company. Thank you, and my name is Muafak Ahmed. Uh, I'm a Finn, despite the name. Father from Egypt, grew up here in Finland, never uh, applied for a job, always created my own. Uh, serial entrepreneur, and lately also turned VC. Uh, we founded a, uh, a VC company called Superhero Capital a year ago, made 10 investments, and then we actually have with Paul a fund called Sisu uh, Game Ventures, which we have 18 investments in, in 18. gaming. 18, one eight. Okay. <laughs> We're not that active. Oh, it's, uh, you eight. could have done 80. Yes, indeed. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the theme, um, I think all of us have encountered diversity in, in many forms. It's also a very tricky topic. I, I was making some research for this discussion and uh, I got a really very uh, diverse set of comments from people. Some th thought that it's a really excellent topic. Others thought that, oh, don't go there, it's very tricky and very controversial, uh, or it's just silly, and, and why you want to talk about something like that? Uh, but I think one of the kind of key points that I've learned in my, my career is that if you are competing globally, you need to hire globally. You need to have access to a global talent pool, because I think it would be, even if you're a company or a country, it doesn't really matter, if you think that you can restrict to just the local talent pool, whereas your competitors are, either they are more open or they have more access to a larger pool of talent, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Um, and I think this is something that many of the companies I meet just don't kind of get, that they need to hire and be able to hire globally. And I think that's one of the topics I'd like to understand, like how do you hire, how, how, how do you make yourself attractive globally? Yeah. So I'm going to start out, I mean, it's scary, that's why a lot of people don't do it, right? You actually have to go outside of your comfort zone. Normally, startups, like even in my first company, I hired people that I knew, people I felt comfortable with, right? And so, you have to get out of that mindset, and that's hard. So, hopefully, you kind of realize you get some good advisors around you, or some investor pushes you to start thinking about that. But it's never intuitive to go out there and say, oh, I should hire somebody that I don't know anything about, I don't know how to judge, and I have no idea about their background. That's really scary, right? Yeah. But you kind of over time you realize you have to do this, right? It's, it's I mean, there's only so many good people in the world. You have but to I think the up. trick there is understanding why. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Because if you're getting out of your comfort zone just to get out of your comfort zone, it's just hard work, right? But understanding how this is going to hit my bottom line, because ultimately, and we all know this, everyone here knows this, it's really hard to build a business. 
Mm. It's really hard to build a business. So trying to find those people that genuinely get it or are passionate about the space that you're building, they might not be around the corner. Yeah. And those are the people that will make you ultimately succeed or not. I think especially in a country like Finland, I mean, 99.95% um, of the world's population is outside the country. So I think uh, many companies here are forced to look outside, which really helps the companies in the long run. I think for us, the most important thing is diversity of opinion. And what we noticed is that when you hire people from the same place that have gone to the same schools, they tend to think the same things. And then when you try to solve really complex problems, you just need a lot of different opinions involved. And that's why it's been so beneficial um, hiring people from different areas. Yeah. I think so, one of the problems that we see is that it's an ageist culture that we're in. Mm -hmm. I, I meet a lot of, I say a lot of, but I meet quite a lot of entrepreneurs that are like 55 plus and are solving a genuine problem in their life. And I can see when they do the rounds with angels and VCs, they're not getting the right amount of attention yeah. just because they're 55 plus. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also really unfair in the sense that who someone that has the problem will probably be the person that will solve it and apply technology to it. Yeah, yeah I think uh, one thing that I've been thinking is that, I mean, if you go to these hubs like startup hubs, Silicon Valley or Bay Area, uh, New York, perhaps London, Berlin in Europe, they're very diverse, these groups, and you see lots of different kind of people there in these startups. But, I mean, is there hope for smaller places like Finland, Poland, Lisbon, what have you. I mean, which, where the, the, the actual, the place itself is not so diverse. So, so do, does every successful startup entrepreneur have to actually locate to these hubs, or can you actually build a business from uh, a place like Finland or Milan or... I mean, in yeah. a... Yeah, in a digital space, I mean, if you're willing to hire remotely, which has uh, yeah. worked really well for us, I mean, it's possible to hire anywhere, and it works well. I mean, like my big theory, I do invest everywhere, right? I believe people are equally, smart people are equally distributed on the planet. So, yeah, companies can start anywhere, Can right? we quote you on that? What you say? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Definitely. <brilliant>. <laughs> I, I really believe there's smart people everywhere, right? Um, I people. hope there are. Right? I'm in trouble if not. That's a big thesis of mine. Um, but, I mean, with that being said, yeah, you can start it anywhere. You might want to be plugged in and start traveling to meet other people, but there's no reason why you can't build it anywhere. And we've seen huge companies start everywhere, right? It's just, you have to go out there and be connected to a whole larger, I guess, globe and kind of connected scene of sorts. Yeah. Right? That's definitely my impression. So, as I told you, last two and a half years have been in the Middle East. Um, and my tagline is, innovation is borderless. But I love it, and there's something so empowering in that you can do shit anywhere, and... Traveling around in Cairo or uh, Jeddah or Lebanon or Amman, and you see like genuine hunger for building using technology. And at the same time, there's um, there's also a confidence issue. I'm not in Silicon Valley. I'm not in Stockholm. I'm not in Berlin. And that hampers the energy. So I think our role is yeah you can build a global business from Amman. Yeah, I, I, I'm an investor in a number of companies which started in Finland, and the business now is global. It, typically, you'd see R&D still here in Helsinki, for instance, but then the business people are where the business and the customers are, so be it Asia, US, or the rest of Europe. But um, so uh, as an investor, I see a lot of uh, cases where you have and I, I'm apologizing already how um, biased this is, but I'll give you a typical example. You have a Finnish company, for instance, in Helsinki, 10 people, um, eight guys who went to school together, engineering or business studies, and then there's the, I'm sorry for the, but this is how the, you typically see it, there's the girl who is doing marketing, and then maybe the girl, lady who is doing admin, and, and all of them are Finns, and all of them come from the same circle. So how do you actually break that if you want to... Because then they come to us and say, we built a business here in Finland, that we're going to go global, and they don't have a clue how to hire globally, how to go international. I mean, so that's part of our jobs, right? I mean, yeah. there is something to be said about having a cohesive team in the beginning to kind of run fast, you all know each other, but the minute a company wants to become big, yeah, you got to start pushing, right? And so 
our jobs as investors or other people in the community is to put other people around these companies that they hopefully start getting it leaked into their head, right? And also sometimes you build your company, you have to go where your customers are, right? Yeah. You have all, all of a sudden a huge, you have to show up, right? And you have to be bold and figure it out. So like you have to be, drive growth that way. So. Yeah. Um, but I also think it's, it's a cultural issue in startup land. There are certain rules of how these startups are built, and it's very conveyor belt-esque of uh, the, the cohorts we look at. And I see very few companies from an early stage start thinking about hiring. Uh, they don't have a recruitment talent strategy when they're three or four people because you're so busy doing everything. But like, if you're going to play the chess game, I'm going to be a global winner within my field. I need to be roughly blah, blah people in X amount of countries by that time. Yalla, you have to go start looking for those people and you have to think about it and you probably need to recruit someone that does it. Um, and it's still not within what we think is important. It's about uh, customer acquisition. So I think culturally we need to change, I think. Yeah, yeah and I think also, I mean, um, a lot of companies, they think that they first start in a small market, testing themselves out and so forth. And of course that works for some things, but then if you're doing a digital business and you're serious about it, I strongly believe you have to go global from the very beginning. And then if you need to serve 24 seven and you need to serve different um, time zones, then obviously you need to hire in those time zones. So that's a way of kind of pushing a startup to hire from the very beginning diverse by pushing them global from the yeah. very beginning. Yeah, one thing I, I, a while ago there was an event here in Helsinki which was for like medium sized and larger corporates, so 10 million to 1 billion revenues. And I was hosting a couple of round tables, there were workshops about hiring world class talent. And my message to them is if you are a like 50 year old company from middle of Finland and the guys want to hire the best coders from Helsinki or from wherever, I think it's, it is very, very difficult. Then we, I, as a comparison, I, I'm a, an angel, the first angel investor in a company called Smart, Smartly, which is doing uh, phenomenally well. It's a Facebook marketing platform. Uh, I spoke to the, uh, the CEO and the founder, Krista Ovaska, uh, and asked how much time he spends recruiting. Because it's, it's so important. It's the number it one is, job. It's so <laughs> the most important thing. It is 60, 6 zero percent of his time spending time just That's trying to role. find the best talent. You need to create a uh, powerful thing that attracts. Yeah, but I was, so I, I was talking to these bigger corporates and I asked like the CEO, are you going to spend 60% of your time hiring? And they were like, no. But that's what it, you need if you it, want to attract world-class talent. I mean, true yeah. visionaries, true people that run and start amazing companies yeah. are able to go out there and they do spend time recruiting. They're sucking people in. Like, yeah. you know, you have this you know, reality distortion field, whatever the hell it is, right? You're going to go out there and convince somebody it's unconvincible and you're going to be like, you're going to come in and work for me, right? Yeah. It takes a lot of effort. Yeah. But that's, also, that's how they recruit investors too. I get sucked in. I fall in love with the founder. I'm like, oh my God, you're so awesome. Take my money, right? It's, it's the same thing with hiring. It's emotional, which yeah. is, I think, also something that's underestimated in these things. Uh, one of our founding partners at EQT Ventures is uh, Case Coolen, who built Bookings.com and scaled up Uber. And it's phenomenal to see him work with his playbook for city-by-city city growth. And such a big part of that growth is recruitment, like organization. How do you attract uh, a lot of people quickly that understand and run in the right direction? And it's not something you just do. Like you need a proper process uh, in order to make that manageable. It's, uh, yeah. And a lot of companies fail there. And then I think as well to be able to uh, keep great people in, I think it's really important to have that kind of diversity of, of opinion and to enable people to have different opinions. And one of the things um, there I think that uh, we do in our company quite well is that we always kind of test things so that it's not that because, for example, the CEO has an opinion, we're going to do it. It's just something that when someone has something, we go on test it and see what works and go with that. And I think that's important. And I was thinking when um, I heard about the topic for this panel about yeah. the whole situation with Peter Thiel and the Facebook board and how some people wanted him out because he supported Trump. And I felt, I mean, that's a massive, massive threat against diversity if you're you know, pushing people out because they have another ideology or another opinion. Yeah. So I think yeah. that's also um, something that belongs to this discussion, yeah. that type of aspect. Yeah, definitely. Um, one thing uh, when I was researching this topic, uh, someone brought up uh, a very interesting point how technology can help diversity. 
or kind of um, trigger and, and foster it. And, and one of the views was um, like when you have these um, uh, like Slack and all these corporate uh, chat applications or messaging systems, how that's actually democratizing the company. And the quiet people can also, because it's connecting the entire company, anyone can just chip into the conversation, and even if they wouldn't, in a normal conversation like this, they would just maybe remain quiet. But in Slack, they can voice their opinion, and it's kind of, it's an I interesting like that, thing. Yeah. So, would you have a view on this? I completely agree, and I think that's an important part of it, cr thinking about how the information will flow in and how it's used. I was sitting with another company, um, a, a startup the other day, that had a, a challenge because they'd been very active on the diversity, which meant that they had really interesting conflict in the business like that was moving it forward. But then you need to handle that conflict. And how do you handle that in terms of creating priorities in your product roadmap? So you also, if you're bringing in that, which you should, you need a strong uh, VP product, or you need a strong CTO that takes the information in and then prioritizes. Because if you're stuck suddenly with a hundred ideas that are all good, and yet nothing happens, then you haven't won anything either. So you need to be able to... Yeah, I mean, great product people are able to synthesize feedback from all their users as well, too. And all the people sure. around them say, that's the most important thing, and pull that out, right? Or like these two things, we put them together, and you're done. So yeah, it's really important to have that person that kind of what's it, like mediates it and takes the best information out. Yeah. It's hard. But and that's, if my idea isn't work. used, I need to feel empowered anyway. Thank you, Aurora, for suggesting that yeah. shit idea. But, and we're going to park it and yes. think about it. Yeah. How do you shoot the person down nicely so yeah. they come back with you again? They don't feel offended yeah. and like, oh my God, you didn't listen to me. No, I did listen, but it wasn't the right thing for the business at this time, right? Yeah. That's hard. It's really well, hard to it is. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about culture. Um, how do you... Let's assume that you've fixed or ticked all the boxes, you've fixed like all these things and you, you managed to hire all these wonderful people from all over the world, from so many different nationalities. How do you actually make them to work together? Like in my previous company, we had 300 employees uh, and we had 50 five zero nationalities. And it was really sometimes challenging when you have the German guy and the French guy and the, well, all of them and the Cameroonese uh, PhD from mathematics chipping in and so on. So how, how do you actually meld and, and gel this together and make it work? How, how do you make culture? Yeah. I mean, in general, one thing I try to encourage is shared experiences, right? So maybe you don't have a lot in common, but if you as a company or group can actually do things together, then you start having kind of these touch points and that, you know, just the breaking the ice and then the conversation can flow into other things. That's one thing I see that helps. But then always the problem is like, what activity do we pick? Whatever, right? Do people want to go snowboarding? Do people want to go eat this food? Oh my God, they yeah. can't, right? But usually shared experience is a great touch point. Other things, yeah, like bringing people together just as often in the organization, right? Try to have as open barriers, like have different groups that have nothing connected to each other sitting next to each other, right? These type of things help bring people together and hopefully they talk, right? Yeah. yeah, I think share, especially if you're working uh, remotely, I think it's really important for people as well to have a culture where they feel comfortable sharing as well personal things. And I think then as well, people are able to understand the context a lot better. So as well, investing in the right technology to be able to um, give people as well so that they're not just talking about work, but as well talking about their life in general is important. Yeah. But I'm also back to the fact that it's really difficult to build a business. And I think <laughs> by being honest, that it's really difficult to build a business, something happens in the culture. I cry every day. I'm not going to start living a life where I don't cry every day. Mm. I've just accepted <laughs> that it's difficult. And mm. that makes the conflict or the conversation productive because I'm not shocked mm. that I cry. So adding a bit more complexity to this, like for instance, you have a team which is very spread out. So how do you actually manage it? Like how, how do you, what is the method like in, in practical terms? Do you have... Uh, video chats or hangouts or what have you. How many locations? Um, I think we're now up at maybe 14. Okay. Um, uh, well, for us, it all comes down to hiring the right people. So yeah. uh, there's a specific type of person I think that can work really well, even though they are, for example, working remotely. Yeah. And I think finding that person and really um, identifying the kind of characteristics around that is the yeah. number one step. But other than that, I think um, giving people the independence to go their own way and do their own projects has been really important. And then, of course, using a lot of different tools, like, for example, Slack um, helps. Yeah. But I guess in the end, it's all about um, how, who you hire. 
have all your employees actually met physically? Um, yes, we usually okay. do like global team meets at least um, a few times a year. Yeah, I, I, I think that's really important. You need to meet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, electronic communications can facilitate things, yep. speed up things, but it's not supplement. Or I mean, it doesn't. You can't ignore. Why are we at this conference? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta meet people. It's of still course. haven't replaced that. Right? Yeah, very true. And over communicate. Yeah. Oh yeah. Repetition, repetition, yeah. repetition. Yeah. Here's a, here's a silly question. Um, we've been talking about diversity for, what, 20 something, I don't know, already, a while, mm. but what, what is it actually? What, what is diversity? I mean, it's like you have uh, different co color people or like different gender, or what is it? I mean, because I, I was reading this article a while ago, which is um, quite interesting, a, a take on diversity, and it said, like, look at Silicon Valley companies. You have uh, people from 17 different countries. You have the Bangladeshi coder, and you have the, the guy from Israel, and you have this and that. And if you actually look at it, it's uh, their median age is maybe 27, 28. They went to the same schools. They watched the same TV series. They laugh at the same jokes. So is that diverse, even if they are representing all the colors of the, the world? So what is diversity? I mean, yeah, you could say you did check that diversity box, but then also yeah. there is a lack of thought, right? Yeah. But yeah, you bring in somebody from outside, and sometimes they can't communicate, so you have to work even harder to integrate that person. But yeah. there's different levels. Yeah, it could be about sex, it could be about color, or it could be about just thought. Hey, I'm an anarchist, and you're super yeah. religious. Oh, shit, that's diverse too, yeah. right? So it could be all types of things, yeah. Yeah. But you I'm must... Awesome. I mean, that's diverse, yeah. but I think in this context, is like what creates the best setup to succeed, and uh, I love the analogy of, of a team. Like you put together different skill sets, and I, I love working with my team, because they don't know what I do or how I do it, yeah. and I love going to them and going, how does, and can I have your opinion, etc. So it's, it's complementary skills as well as opinions, as well as... Um, energies, etc. Yeah. It's also yeah. great when you have a, somebody that's totally different than you and you trust that they're good exactly. at that. Exactly. Yeah. That's important too. Like, you give all these diverse people, if you don't trust that person's going to own that, mm -hmm. it sucks. Let's say you're a yeah. CEO and you have a CTO and you're like, I don't know if he's good. Oh, that's a yeah. problem, right? So. Yeah. But that yeah. comes down to the general direction. Yeah. So if you have a clear direction of where you're going and then you put together the, uh, the girl band, uh, for lack of a better analogy, or the A-team, yeah, I, uh, I have to put a little commercial break here. Uh, so we have um, founded a, an organization. We're all in sales, don't uh, worry. We're not that diverse. We, <laughs> <laughs> one year ago uh, at, at Slush, actually, we came together with some people, and then we decided to create something that called the Shortcut, which is a, it's a non-profit organization which is under the Startup Foundation. So it's under, or actually, it's the sister organization of Slush, and, and our mission is to increase diversity in the startup world. So we start here now in Finland. We've done it for, for a year now. And we're bringing people, uh, you have uh, immigrants, second generation immigrants, Finns who just haven't maybe found their place here uh, in the society, M misfits in a way, quote unquote. And, and we're kind of giving them the tools to actually enter the startup world. And um, I think that's what we've, we have loads of different events here and, and workshops and so on. And it would be, what would, has been really interesting is kind of to see when people discover their skills and I actually can do that. And that is very exciting, I think, kind of giving opportunities to people. So I think we need to close in like a minute can or I, so. Can I sell as well? Yeah. So we're doing diversity in a slightly different uh, angle, which is I think the European early stage market is cliquey mm -hmm. and a little boys club. So what we've created with Together is a matchmaking platform where you can get exposure to other markets, i.e. cliquey markets in uh, France or uh, the UK. But Together oh. is something where we're trying to make a difference. Brilliant. Can I sell as well? Of course. <laughs> we're hiring a brand bastion. <laughs> Yay! So Excellent. Join and in your Yeah, I'm looking to meet interesting people anywhere. I don't care <laughs> yeah. where you're from, right? <laughs> cool. All right. So thanks a lot for my panel, and uh, thanks a lot for the audience. And uh, if you have any, any questions, happy to connect on social media, or if you're interested in the shortcut, just uh, there are 50 volunteers around. We're wearing these T-shirts, so grab one and 
a person and uh, just talk to them. Cool. Thank awesome. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.